In this section, I want to talk about another way to add data. You'll see here that I've added study, but it doesn't have any data. Now I could enter this by hand, but let's just imagine that Smith, which is the study that I'm referring to, has not provided the data in this format where they've provided the number of events and the total number enrolled in each arm. Instead, they've provided in a different format. So we're going to use this calculator button, which is the fifth from the left or the right of the radio buttons across the top here. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer. This calculator and this interface doesn't always work as well as I'd like it to, and I'm not sure if it's because of a Mac, but sometimes this update table option doesn't highlight and you have to enter the data by yourself. So of course there are other ways that you could enter, you could obtain a, a study might report the outcome. And I should also point out that this tool is designed for two arm parallel trials that have independent observations. If you don't have a two arm parallel trial with independent observations, then the assumptions that go into this are not valid. Notice here that we're using a Z distribution. So there's an assumption about normality. So let's just say that we have some information from the study, but not this events and totals data. Let's say we have the control group risk, which we are almost always going to need. We do have an odds ratio and we have a confidence interval. Notice that these were automatically populated based on our assumption about the study design. We know that there were 40 animals in the trial and that they were evenly distributed across the groups. So you can see here that all the fields were populated. Now the last time I did this, I was able to click on this update table. That's not going to happen this time. But it's okay, I can take this data this 10, 20, this 12, 20, and enter it into the table. Whereas originally I didn't have that data. Maybe when you use it, you'll be able to enter it. So I'm going to have 10, 20, 12, 20. And I'm just using the side movement key to enter that data. So there I was able to enter that. You can also use this for continuous outcomes. And we haven't done a continuous outcome, but let's just do one now. Let's add a study. And let's just say that this study of James has average daily gain data. So I'm going to use the calculator. Let's just imagine that instead of reporting the standard deviation, the study reported the 95% confidence intervals. So let's just say we have a mean difference of 40 grams and we have a 95% confidence interval of 30, that goes from 30 grams to 50. And we have a p-value of 0 0.04. We also know that there are 200 animals in each group. And we know that the mean of one group, so the mean in the group, is 650 grams. So now you can see that we have populated these table. So the difference here between the groups is this 40, this is the mean difference. There are also calculators here, which you can use if you want to calculate, calculate the mean, etc. So you can see that what I've done is I have been able to, with some data, populate the field. And I've now updated that. Now I'm going to go to Han 
let's just say that Han instead decided to give me the mean difference, so it was 35, and the standard error of that mean was 5, and gave me that there were 300 animals in the trial, there were 150 in each group, You can see, as yet, I'm not going to be able to enter any data because really I'm going to need a mean. So without that information, you're going to be unable to obtain the information you want. So sometimes you can't get what you want. What's otherwise really common is that people might report the mean And they might report the 95% confidence intervals for the mean. And in that situation, you would be able to. So it differs what data you need to be able to enter or to able to calculate the information you need. So sometimes you'll have it all and sometimes you won't. It really depends on how the authors have written the information. So now you can see that this update data button is working and I can enter my data. And what you see here is that I have average daily gain. So I'm working with a continuous outcome here instead of working with a categorical outcome. So if we go into the properties section, you'll see that this is continuous. I'm using the inverse variance method. I'm going to use a random effects. I'm looking at the mean difference and I'm going to use the mean difference because everybody's measuring the same thing. If I had measures that were much the same proxy but on different scales, then I might use the standard mean difference, but that's a little bit beyond us at this point. If you want to change the subtotals, what that does is remove one of the comparisons and it won't be it won't be good to see it here that we can have a look at that it's more important to look at that in something where we have subgroups so let's have a look at this here we have subgroups let's go and see the impact of making this change so let's just say we decide to have the subgroups only let's see what happens So what you'll see is the overall test for variance moved. Let me just make that clearer. Let's just make this wider. So you see here we have the test for variance for the subgroup, but what's missing is the overall test for variance. If we want that back and I apply it, if you look down in this space, you'll see it come back up. There you go. If you don't want any totals at all, any tests, you just want a descriptive analysis, you can do that. Clearly, these change the confidence intervals. Watch, these are the confidence intervals for the study. So these horizontal lines will move. They're becoming wider and then they'll become shorter. Now this total confidence interval, I've now added in the summary effects. And if I change these, you'll see that that summary effect is changing size instead of the actual studies.